Hi, John Morgan here with Bob's Marketing Greenhouses, and welcome to this week's episode of Bob's Live, our weekly show right here on the internet. So to get things started off today, we have an announcement to make, and I know that some people have really been waiting on it, uh, but we wanted to get Mother's Day out of the way first because it's been just crazy around here. Um, but that big announcement is our spring photo contest winners. Now, we had quite a pile of submissions for the contest. In fact, I've got them laying over here on my desk. Uh, we had 25 pictures submitted in all. And uh, we printed them all out and debated <laughs> for probably a good hour on uh, which ones we liked the best. So it was really hard to narrow it down, um, but we came up with three, a first, second, and third place winner. And then I worked up a video that has all of the photos in it. Um, so after the show this evening, it'll go live here at 4.30 on our blog. You can go and check out the photos. But let's take a look at our winners. Uh, we'll start off with third place. And third place goes to Patrick, and he is from Forest, Virginia. So all the way over in Virginia, and that is just a beautiful photo. Our next winner, second place winner, is a little bit closer to home. And it goes to Molly from Southside, West Virginia. And getting even closer, but jumping across the river, we have our first place winner, and it goes to Teresa from Rutland, Ohio. And that is just a beautiful bloom there. Um, but let's take a look at the video and you can see all of the submissions. I mean, they were all just phenomenal. And it was just super hard for us to come up with some winners. Um, <laughs> and you'll see why when you see the video. Uh, All right, so if you miss submitting something for our spring photo contest, don't worry because now it's time to start our yard of the month contest. 
Uh, we did this last year starting in June. I decided to bump it back a month, so we're going to start taking submissions for May right now. Um, if you have just a beautiful landscape and you want to get rewarded for it, uh, send your photos to ask at bobsmarket.com. And of course, be sure to include your name and address. And uh, photos for May are going to be due by noon on Saturday, June 1st. So I know it's a little bit late notice for May, but I wanted to get this contest rolling. And we're going to do it uh, probably May, June, July, August. And then we may do one in September, October for more of the fall uh, decorations. Um, but I'm thinking about maybe having a fall photo contest like we have with our spring photo contest. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, but you know, May's here, last weekend was Mother's Day, and uh, you're probably working on your flower beds and getting them planted, and also, you might have hanging baskets. So that brings me to this week's helpful gardening hints and tips. So if you get the newsletter, this week we were talking about hanging basket care. And I wanted to cover like three basic aspects of caring for hanging baskets that's pretty much universal. Um, whether it's a fern or a begonia, you know, you can apply these to any hanging basket. So, there's three main things that plants need, and those are our three main topics. So the first one is lighting. All plants require light, but they might require different levels of lighting. So when it comes to selecting your hanging baskets, you need to look at where they're going to be hanging. Sun versus shade. So if you're going to have your hanging basket, you know, hanging, say, on a porch, up underneath the eave of a porch, um, you need to select something that will work with shade. Uh, something like a Boston fern. Um, uh, some of the begonia varieties, uh, New Guinea impatience, um, even double impatience, those are all great shade plants. If you're going to have something in a sunny location, like say out in your yard on a shepherd's hook, uh, you might want something like a petunia that can take full sun. And uh, along with that, if you do have your hanging baskets hanging somewhere like on a porch where they're getting more sun on one side and more shade on the other, you want to be sure to rotate the baskets every now and then, and that'll keep them growing evenly. Um, I know especially ferns, if you don't rotate them, they can get lopsided if you have them hanging on a porch. Uh, an easy hint for that is at the hardware store you can pick up, it's actually made for chains, like if you have a dog or something on a leash, um, there are these little swivel links and you can get those and hang it and then hang your basket from it and that way you can easily swivel them around. Um, the next thing is watering. Whenever you water a hanging basket you want to make sure that you continue to water it until the water starts to drain from the drain hole at the bottom. Uh, that will ensure that you know that the root ball is soaked and that it has enough water because you know it's hanging there it has a limited amount of soil that it can draw water from it's not like it's planted out in a flower bed so it does tend to dry out faster than if the plants were planted in the ground and an easy way to check and it's actually what we do here at Bob's to check how wet a hanging basket is we simply pick them up and judge the weight and you know, it, it might take a little bit of practice at the beginning, but once you get good at it, you can lift a hanging basket and know whether it's dry or wet um, or what have you. Uh, until then, another easy way to check is just to stick your fingers in and touch the top of the soil. If the soil's dry on top, it definitely needs watered. And along those lines, if you let the soil dry out too much, with these hanging baskets, um, whenever you do start watering again, 
It can cause the water just to run around the sides of the root ball and not be soaked up by it. And that's a common mistake, especially with ferns, because a fern, it'll stay kind of perky even though it's dried out. And, you know, you can be watering it and the water's running out the bottom, so you're thinking, oh, it's got enough water. But it really doesn't. And if that happens, you usually need to set the basket in a pan of water or something like that where it can soak the water back up into the root ball. And the final thing is feeding. Now, on most things, it'll say, you know, fertilize every two to three weeks. Now with a hanging basket where you're watering until it's draining out the bottom, uh, I really recommend using a water-soluble fertilizer every time you water. Because what's happening is if you water with a fertilizer, you know, that's fine and dandy. It's, it's there in the soil. Well, the next time you go through a water, if you don't use a water-soluble fertilizer and you're just using plain water, it's actually going to leach that leftover fertilizer out of the water or out of the soil. Um, so, you know, you're basically washing your fertilizer away. And again, we do this every time we water at Bob's. We're using water-soluble fertilizer. And if you do it with every watering, you can pretty much guarantee that your plants are going to get the nutrients that they, that they need and that you're going to get a bushy, healthy, beautiful plant. So those are three simple care tips. And right now, we have 10-inch flowering hanging baskets for $14.99 each. Now the ferns, I believe they're a dollar more. Don't hold me to that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, hanging baskets, they're starting at $14.99 each and up from there. Now let's take a look at the weather forecast. And if we take a look at the radar, uh, the current radar shows some uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms on the move. And looking ahead at the future forecast, uh, we're going to have some moving through our area. Uh, but again, these are kind of hit and miss, kind of pop up showers and thunderstorms. And looking ahead at the forecast, we're going to have kind of the same pattern uh, tomorrow through Sunday. So, Again, don't let it stop you from getting outside. Uh, these are going to be scattered at most, so kind of like today, it's been pretty much dry all day. Uh, so, yeah. And moving on into next week, we are going to have kind of a mini heat wave, I would say. You know, I'm not used to 90 degree temperatures yet, but we're gonna be getting up close to the 90s on Monday and Tuesday. And then later in the week, we're going to drop kind of back down again into the low 80s, high 70s. Looking at the long range temperature forecast, our next cool period is probably 23rd, 24th, somewhere around in there. Uh, so late next week. And then, you know, it looks like we're going to continue to inch one up in through June. And now let's take a look at the allergy forecast. And right now, with all this rain that we've been having, it's great if you're an allergy sufferer because it's kind of helping keep the pollen levels down. And we're kind of in the medium range right now. Uh, we're going to call it a 7.3 out of 12. And again, the main culprit is tree pollen. And you can see we're kind of in the high range, but it's starting to drop off now. And uh, grass pollen now is on the rise. So grass pollen, it's starting to register on this map in our area. Uh, but it's going to be on the rise up through June. And my land, looking at South Dakota out there, they're getting the worst of both worlds right now, tree pollen and grass pollen. So if you live in South Dakota, ooh. Okay, let's take a look at the Gardener's Almanac. And really, we are heading into some great planning time. Uh, the 16th through the 19th, 
So pretty much through this weekend is a barren period. But hey, that's okay because we're going to be having showers and thunderstorms. So it might not be the best time to be out anyway. Um, it's a good time to let your garden dry out. I know I just tilled mine up and then we got all this rain. So, um, But next week, it's going to be an excellent time for planting above ground crops. So corn, beans, peppers, pretty much anything now is safe to plant. And well, that finishes up our show for this week. And I'll see you back here next week at 4 p.m.